15th, 2024, and we're calling to order the Woodbridge Conservation Commission meeting. Um, and the first item on the agenda is a public comment, and I don't think there's anyone here for public comment, and we can receive any public comment. That's correct. We have approval of minutes. Did people get the minutes? Yes. 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 Does anyone have any comments about the minutes? I did have a comment about um, the special meeting minutes. Okay, well, should we do the first, the February sure. first, first? Sure, sure, sure. Is there, should, does anyone want to motion to approve? Motion to approve. I'll second it. All in favor? Sorry, who made a motion? Rachel. Okay. Our second Okay, the February first meeting. She's going to be here and just pick up mm -hmm. the um, special meeting minutes, which were on um, January 31st. Come down here, though. Please present. Mm -hmm. So you might get us. Well, well, up to you. Mm -hmm. totally up to you. January 30th. Whatever you're comfortable with. That's fine. Minutes, seven, oh, yeah. uh, 31st. Yeah. 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 The special meeting, we'll refer to them as the special meeting minutes.
should we go back just for one minute each and introduce ourselves so that um, sure. Um, Rachel knows who I am, um, but uh, I'm Joy Perdome. I um, moved here about 11 years ago and um, have been very heavily involved um, in the community, um, starting with the school, uh, PTO everything, um, and then I was an elected official on the Zoning Board of Appeals and I was asked to come on the commission. Um, at the same time, I kind of had an overlap. I was on the Zoning Board of Appeals till the end of my term in December and just um, re-upped for another four years on the commission. Um, my passion, I'm a master gardener. Um, I started a 4-H program. I'm a big nature girl from Maine, where I was born and raised. And um, I am, you know, working at Macero Farm now as a farm-based educator, and um, I'm just, I, I love that we're gonna be able to you know, do some great work for the town, because it is so beautiful here, and um, yeah. Very passionate about the pollinator pathway, which you'll hear more about, I guess, tonight, so um, welcome to our new members, and excited to get to work with you. I'm Sharon. I have a, uh, been here for 30 some odd years, raised two children here, and I was on the Wetlands, in the Wetlands Commission for 15 years, I think, about. And I've been on this commission for about four. And I also am passionate about our planet and being as healthy as possible for now into perpetuity. Diana, I'm with Mercury, co-chair. Um, I've been on the commission for a couple of years now. Um, my, I'm born and raised with Bridge, a little you know, time away in between. Um, uh, my background is in uh, energy and sustainability and conservation. So I look forward to meeting you. Thanks. Rachel, <coughs> so it uh, sounds like I'm kind of the newcomer here. I've lived in Woodbridge for about three years. <laughs> doesn't compare to 30, um, but uh, I lived in New Haven for about uh, five or six years before that, so I've been in the area for a little bit longer. Uh, so I kind of gave more of a spiel last time, but um, I was originally a tech consultant and decided that really where my passion lay is conservation. So I sort of changed careers and got sidetracked into basic research and just finished up a PhD, and uh, now I'm doing a postdoc uh, at UConn. Uh, but this just seemed like a really great opportunity to actually, you know, apply conservation in sort of uh, in a real world setting instead of kind of this academic realm that I'm usually in. So I kind of jumped at the chance, and uh, it seems like there's a lot of really great people on board. So I'm looking forward to working with everybody. Hi, my name is Valerie King. I've lived here for 18 years. I lived in West Philadelphia, New England for 19 years. I live here with my husband, but I also have three children. Um, my background is in real estate. Um, I'm a licensed mortgage loan officer and also a licensed insurance broker. Um, and I am uh, very elated to be on this committee. I've been on the committee for about two and a half years and uh, feel it's a great group of people and um, welcome aboard. Thank you. I'm Barbara Hagen-Smith. Um, I've lived here most of my life. <laughs> um, although I did spend about 15 years down in the West Indies. Um, and, but I went to Annie, I went to Sunday school, et cetera, et cetera. And I came back actually to take care of my mother many, uh, many years ago now. And I worked part time in the library, but I was <coughs> very involved in the historical society here. In conservation, I was the head of the historical society in the islands. I continued, I've always been involved in history, conservation, and so forth. I was delighted to get on this committee. Um, again, about two and a half years ago, I think a lot of us got involved at the same time. Um, 
love working with everybody. So I'm hoping to get lots of <laughs> <laughs> Nice to meet you all. That's oh, great, Joe. <laughs> thank you, Curtis. Uh, I've been, uh, we've been in town now for about 30 years, raised two of our daughters here. One of them was rich in Boston, and Tommy over tonight, which is, I may have to leave a little early because she's actually coming home, but um, my other daughter is in California. Been involved with Tom for quite some time um, in different capacities, everything from the fire commission to a number of other commissions. Just recently ran for first selectman and, and was fortunate enough to be elected. Um, I have, uh, we have some, some challenges that we face in town that certainly, uh, certainly include uh, parts that are very important from a conservation standpoint. So I'm, I'm very interested in some of the, particularly in the commissions that work with land, work with conservation, and things of that nature. Um, because there are some things that, we're, that I'm hoping we can, we can do in Woodbridge to enhance what everyone has spoken about and what everyone has stayed in town for. Um, so so um, I look forward to working with the group also and, and really seeing what, the, what comes out of the group. So thank you, and I appreciate you joining. <coughs> thank you. Um, So I'll send this around to everybody, but there are um, some fact sheets where we can learn a little bit more about <coughs> the authorities, the duties of the Conservation Commission. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole shalls and mays and all of that, but I'm just going to give you the quick overview, so I apologize to everybody who has to listen to me and read this aloud. Um, what is a Conservation Commission? Conservation commissions are volunteer municipal government bodies that are authorized by the Connecticut statute to conserve, develop, supervise, and regulate natural resources. And then it cites the, cites the section. However, the charge of the commission may vary by municipal ordinance. Commissions may manage open space, land, and water resources within their jurisdictional limits. Uh, commissions have the authority to advise other boards and agencies about conservation concerns within the municipal projects and development. Conservation <coughs> commissions have a role in increasing resiliency by suggesting how climate change may further impact natural resources due to specific land management in vulnerable locations. Commissions can represent the significance of how natural features can be a part of natural based solutions to climate impacts such as flooding, excessive heat, erosion, uh, shoreline stabilization, or poor water quality. Coordination between municipal boards and commissions, non-governmental organizations, and even adjunct towns is imperative when addressing climate resilience. Municipalities should consider, should, excuse me, utilize a conservation commission in finding solutions to specific, um, to site specific concerns. For example, when considering flooding solutions, combining best practice stormwater management and conservation easements that protect open space and allows for natural stormwater infiltration would be an effective use of the Conservation Commission's authority and allow other level of monitoring and enforcement. It goes on and on for 12 pages, so I will stop there and let everybody else read the rest themselves. But I thought I'd at least get that out there, so um, we can talk a little bit more about it at our, our next meeting. But I'll share that I just want to share with you the resource handbook for Connecticut Conservation Commission that's online. It has like 60, 70 or 80 pages, I think. And mm -hmm. I will add that to your resource for our next meeting. <laughs> okay, events. What's happening around town? So there's a uh, something I know about is on February 17th, Saturday at the library, there is a Meet a gathering about compost. <coughs> Composting by someone who's supposed to be well versed in this topic and um, it's being put on by the Sustainability Commission or MSR Farm. Right, so I think it should be short and to the point and um, informative. Informative and doing many more, but um, in the thing that I was just looking at about waste disposal in the town of Woodbridge in the it's a survey. Um, the plan conservation development, 25% of land, you know, things disposed of are organic materials. So I think that's a very low hanging fruit for us to emphasize and maybe encourage people to compost and decrease the amount of waste that is put into the landfill. Just to add 
strengthen that statement that you just gave there about 25%. Just to be clear, 25% of municipal <coughs> solid waste, 25% of the tonnage is credited to um, being uh, food and biological waste. I think it's actually waste. higher than that, really. It's, it's higher. And yeah, so it, it's, it's going to be the way of the future. We're going to have to take it out of the waste stream, like recycling, you know, ended up having to come out. Food waste will, that will be the way the future is we'll have to find another way. Because it, it makes great soil. soil. It makes amazing soil. Mm -hmm. So that, maybe that can be an undercurrent or a theme of different things, but this is a time when the whole town can learn more in a very easy and efficient way. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. I might add it is something from a, from a personal perspective or from a first elections office perspective that from an initiative we are going to have a composting initiative coming out of our office and it is something that we want to see from a town perspective. Yeah, nice, great. Anything we can do to support it, please let us know. Now, of course, there's still some evaluation that needs to happen. We have to go through the logistics to make sure it can happen, but that's something that we're very anxious or very um, committed to. Great. And the survey, I just saw that pop up today. Mm -hmm. They just put it out today. Yeah, right. so it just came out. Oh. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, maybe I'll send that. Very close, two minutes. You know what might be good? There's a survey that's out about, about composting. Compost. And, yeah. Okay. If so that definitely. lecture could be videoed and put up on the website. It, it will be. That is it will be, yes. Okay. Will be Great. Will be available for, for folks wow. to watch. That's Any cool. other Conversation on disability on the 28th at 7 o'clock at the library as well. 28th of March. February. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Great. Anything else people know about around town that's worth reading? No. We were sent also about information on the uh, information. Ah. There's going to be that. What day is that? Do you remember? It's March. Thanks, okay. I think anyone who hasn't been to one needs to go to one. Yes. And any of us who have gone to one probably needs so to go to one. So new members. <laughs> the FOIA meeting? Okay. All right. I'll send that around. Did everybody see that email? I did not. Thanks for mentioning that part. But I might have, because I've just gone recently, so maybe I don't need to. No, I think they said it to everybody on the commission. But Okay, so are we ready for old business? Tree preservation proposal with Parker and Diana. The tree preservation. Um, what I so the last um, the last I think we spoke, we were going to connect with some of the folks from uh, zoning. We did get a hard copy of the zoning regulations, so far when I get together to review that um, and. Uh, I connected with, uh, with one of the members from PNC, um, and so basically at any time we can just go to their meeting and let them know what our intentions are. Right now they're cleaning up the language, so things that are like ambiguous, 
and don't have water, they're removing or whatnot. So we want to. So should we try to aim for like a April or May meeting to go for them? Uh, for zoning, um, I would probably go to the March meeting. Okay. Whenever, whenever the next meeting is that we can attend, that would be appropriate. Yeah. Okay. So you guys are going to figure that out when that meeting is. By the way, the um, FOI meeting is on Tuesday, March 5th at 6 p.m. It'll be at C Town Hall Central Meeting. March 6th? March, no, March 5th, 5th at 6 p.m. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. If it's not a special meeting, the next TPZ meeting is on March 4th, Monday, March 4th. Yeah, we have to That's pretty soon. Yes. You want to do it that month, me or the next? Yeah, I think strike while the iron's hot. Okay, that's March fourth. Correct. We start at six thirty. And now I'll just sleep here and stay for the foyer meeting the next day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> you just have a house. Can't miss the meeting. Right? <laughs> Cheers or coffee. Busy time here. <clears throat> okay. Valvet, this is really a few of us. So, I think we should update people from the special meeting. Things have evolved with a conversation or two. Um, oh, are, are you going to meet for the grant first? Well, I think we or should talk about how we had, we had a special meeting and we talked about the trails. And when a few of us um, thought about it, we realized that, well, we have to go through the Regional Water Authority, we have to go through the land truck. Any possibility of doing that by March 1st in the winter, or going out there, or it seems, at least to me, unlikely since we don't do this full time. But Barbara has been working on this historic signage uh, thing for months with, um, with, with Paul, who did you work with? With Tim. With Tim, right. And a couple of other people from the Historic Society. Society. I don't. And do you all know about the signage? Okay, so I, 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 do you want to present? But I do have a presentation after. Okay, so let me just present our transition. So as we were working on it, we thought that that might be more plausible, though we still only just have a month to do this, which makes it not very plausible. Um, because Barbara and other people have already done a lot of the background work, and it wouldn't take interacting with new municipalities and organizations as much. So Barbara, you want to? say what you can do. Just to explain what this is. Um, the idea is to have a program with in conjunction with the Historical Society where we uh, identify historical sites along the trails and then um, people from the Historical Society write up the information about these sites and stories about them and so on and so on. And then we have um, signs constructed, small signs to put on the trails. And, and we'll have to get permission from the various organizations to be able to do that. But they will have QR codes where the people can simply um, look at the QR codes that go straight to the website of the Historical Society and learn all about these sites. So we, we minimize signage and stuff on the trails, and yet people get to learn a whole lot more about, about what they're walking through besides woods. Um, and, and we thought this would at least embrace the educational part of the grant, the interim grant possibility. And Val has been working very diligently on this. I, I wanted to ask some of you. Oh, is, is it, are we, so are we okay if we make the transition away from the trail to possibly the historic signage? Sure. Okay. So, so I, we, I have been working on it, and I, I'm going to be, I've, I've encapsulated of what I've done so far and what needs to be done. Um, to this. So I don't have. Do we share these? Can if, you, share? if you could share some. Yeah, this is the electronic one that you sent over? Yes, just oh, now. Okay. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yes, I, uh, you can do that. No, I'm so sorry. You can do this. I have an electronic. And I'll share with everyone electronically, too, if that's oh, all right. Could it be put on the... Okay, so on here? On there? Yeah. Sure. Oh, okay. Sure. 
is that uh, short day? Okay. I will start uh, speaking. So, uh, thank you. So, um, we reviewed, first of all, there was a um, seminar online that some of us were able to see, and it is reported. Um, so there is a grant application and there is a rubric. So I have, and some of us have reviewed the grant application. Um, I have identified um, the Musicanic Council of Boy Scouts, uh, and those include the towns of Derby and Ansonia. And the reason why I did that was because um, it is including another uh, district, which we get points for. So on the rubric, there are certain line items, and then you get points. You make it 10 points, you make it 15, you make it 8. And so whatever you do, depending on what you do, you're going to get certain points. And Dave, that was here last month, um, was very keen on how these points can help us to, to be successful with this. Um, were they interested? Were the Boy Scouts interested in um, I talked to the administrator, and she gave me two more names uh -huh. that are going to possibly contact uh, me. Um, my husband and I also visited a trail. The trail is the Quinnipiac Preserves in New Haven. Just to look at the various types of signage, and I emailed Sharon some of the signs. Yeah, I can um, the, but they don't have QR codes. Um, I've also, I did a, contact a sign company, they're from Nautitut, and they recently finished a proposal with Middlebury, Connecticut, um, with signage, and they had between 13 to 15 signs at a cost of about 15,000, but they did not have a QR scan. But the, so, and, and just about how big were those signs? They, they were various, they were various. Okay. So, and I, if, I don't know if we can put <coughs> up from the, put it back reserved, but I have photos of them. But we don't have to have large signs because it's just, the, yeah. that's what we were talking about, it's just a QR code that we're putting out. Okay. So it could be less than that. Right, we, uh, we don't have to have graphics unless we want to. But so it's yeah. just the QR code that we're putting putting on there. And we also just purchased signs, right, last year to mark the entrances to some of the trails in towns, right, with, um, you know, the, the hiking ones, the brown ones that say, like, trail starts here. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if it's the same size, but we will know. Um, we'll, we'll have a price, you know, from that project that, that Tim right. did. Okay. They, yeah. they can be quite small. All we have to do is say right. the name of the site, yeah. right. like Indian burial ground or whatever, however, and and then have the QR code. Right. And you, you yeah. latch onto that. And that will take you to the information. So right. the idea is to have them as small as possible and see and still be able to see them. I also contacted a company that produces a QR scan code and spoke to their representative or marketing salesperson. She is, they are out of New York, but she actually um, is a Connecticut native and she thinks that her father has golf here in Woodbridge at the Woodbridge Country Club, so that was a nice connection. And so I've also written some suggested um, lesson plans. I wanted just to go over some of the lesson plans. So I've written some narratives up um, because in education, you know, there's four different ways to be educated. Uh, it's not just one way, it's auditory, it's reading, it's movement, it's tactile. So there's many different ways to learn. Um, so some of the things I thought about were the uh, Wekawa tribe and the Pawgasset, mm -hmm. the original Quinnipiac tribe, and talking about the original Quinnipiac territory, which encompassed 10 present-day towns from the Atlantic Shore at West Haven uh, to Woodbridge. Um, two Woodbridge residents that I found from the historical site that uh, Junius Payne and Henry Williams um, and they were two enslaved African Americans who served in the Union Army in the Civil War. Uh, Reverend Benjamin Woodbridge, the namesake of the town, the Amity Parish, Thomas Darling, who was, was an 18th century merchant, farmer, and politician, whose friends and associates included Roger Sherman and Benedict Arnold. Um, historical battles and or military conflicts, 
And also, I had read a, an article about the creation of stone walls and how their existence was used in military battles and military conflicts. And so, you know, when you do a lesson plan, you say the left te the students will learn. So, um, they uh, students will learn the method in which indigenous peoples use chew sticks and chewing on fresh herbs to cleanse their teeth and gums. So that would be step. Um, Students will learn about the life of famous Woodbridge residents such as Roger Sherman and his connection to the Revolutionary War, the Constitution of the United States, Declaration of Independence, as well as his position as mayor of New Haven. A lot of people don't know that he was the mayor of New Haven. Um, and that would be his. Huh? He, he, an interesting fact, he ran against Tom Sterling. And he won. <laughs> and he won. I just Tom Sterling picture of the so I've written, I've written everything out. I don't have to read everything, but I wrote on the first page what I did and what I need. So just in capsule to make it very quick. I think that if I do lesson plans, if we uh, include other uh, Boy Scout and Girl Scout troops outside of our district and within our district, um, what I would need to move forward, what we would need as a group, um, I need the maps depicting the location of the trails, and I need an individual to complete that whole requirement because they want maps to identify where we are, are speaking. Yeah. Right. Um, I would need an individual to develop a maintenance plan via a written plan on the frequency of trail maintenance and the verification of the, if, if the QR scheme is working. And I would need letters of support from the Woodbridge Historical Society, the first selectmen, and other entities that see the benefit of this initiative. So there's a lot more here. I don't want to spend all your time, but I've written everything out and I've sent it for everybody to yeah. see. And if this is just, you know, we can incorporate more information. I just wrote this up myself, but I feel that I think we have a start here, and if we have those other things I just mentioned, um, I think that we I would be comfortable with submitting it. And if, yes. if anybody else wants to work with me on with with wow, me, wow, this is amazing. Definitely. You know, yeah. because um, you know, Woodbridge. One one of the beautiful things about if we're able to conserve as much as we can this green space here in Woodbridge, is that we have. New Haven, Ansonia, Seymour, all of this area surrounding us, Hampton even, that can come to Woodbridge to enjoy this resource that we've conserved. And to have that, that element of the historical context and everything, especially where we're, you know, honoring, you know, indigenous people and, you know, all those that came before us, like, I just think that that is, a huge, wonderful opportunity for Woodbridge to be a shining star, you know, like conservation, but also education, you know, and history and just all of it. Nature. Um, I was thinking to the end of the fact that we have less than a month to do this, I was thinking maybe right now we could brainstorm and each of us could try to find a person to get a letter of recommendation and be responsible for that. I'll ask the first one. Oh, I'm just going to ask the first one. Sorry. I'm going to ask the first one. Can you ask the historical one? 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 Right. I'll do right. land trust. Were um, there some other Masaro? I could do Masaro, but should we do other <coughs> support? You would you? I mean, would that be something that the school would really want because they could use it as a, a science teacher? <coughs> do a science teacher from science, but history. history? I mean, sure. that would be amazing you for even elementary kids to. You know, they're usually going up to West Rock, you know, to Judge's Cave, but like, we have plenty of stuff in our own little woods right here. Would you be willing to contact the, the, the principal, principal of the sure. teacher? Absolutely. Yeah. 
Um, any so how, would you, how, how are we posing it that we're trying to get a grant for historic markers, historic markers, historic markers, markers signage, <coughs> QR code for educational purposes? Um, I was going to say I could draft a template lesson plan. Yeah. That would be helpful. Yeah. 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 Okay. And a template letter. letter. And then that would a template letter. You know, in other words, I'm not sure. A lot of times with the grants, you need um, when they ask for recommendation, you want to make sure you have some information included in what the recommendation is for. Some of them are very basic and very simple, and some of them are not. And so yeah, they have a lot. If I can just interject, I have a call into the head of the the grant. Um, uh huh. Kimberly, I did say, oh, oh, I haven't gotten a call back. And I haven't gotten a call back. <laughs> <laughs> but I did say others might have called. So, you know. Sorry, they, did, they did have some good resources online on that grant and in the rubric where they gave you examples of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a So I'm, I'm curious if there was an example of <coughs> the maintenance plan on there that we could already use. There's, would that be no, in the data set not. for the trail master? No, well, it could be, but um, there, I'm saying there was already some templates and examples of mm -hmm. ones that people had submitted before, so we could borrow. But we have okay. to be very careful if we're doing this grant, we have to be very careful that we are addressing only what we are doing. In other words, we don't get into talking about maintenance of the trails at all. No, we're talking about maintenance of the signs. Of the signs and, to, right, right. So well, maybe we um, make it a, um, a twice a year thing that someone in the Conservation Commission does a hike and goes looking at the trails, the signs, and making sure they're still well, intact. Or work in common, common so with interest. the land trust and yeah. or the town trail master, et cetera, et cetera. Um, okay. The other thing that I have done is, and I have not Oh, Andy Danzig would be a good person. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I have not heard back yet again either, but I have contacted the person I spoke about before to possibly do the design work, <coughs> to make signs, and to give us some costs, and do the connection of the QR to the yeah. to the historical society um, just website. Real quick, I want to touch base on something that you reminded me. We have to make sure that we're working in coordination with our uh, director of finance on there. So I was thinking we should get a meeting with Tony. Well, when we had discussed at our previous meeting, our if, um, the previous meeting was the special meeting, we talked to somebody who was going to connect with him. I thought, that, I thought that we had said he, he had written us an email, <laughs> me an email that, that I was the first. I forgot that was the first thing I did. I wrote an email to I believe Miss Sullivan, mm -hmm. and asked what was the procedure before oh, we right, undid. Did. And so she responded and she said, if you could complete the most of the application, Mr. Genovese okay. will will finish it as he did with other organizations within and Woodbridge. That's what he said. So we did that was the first time. How much is it for? Is it just well, we don't know how much? Seven hundred thousand something No. Uh -huh. <laughs> but um we we do have a, a short time frame so we probably need to get him queued in so that he puts it in his schedule of what He's a very busy person. It is budget season. We do need to figure out some of the the costs ourselves. We have to figure out our own budget. I've also um, gotten the agreement that the people who write grants in the historical society will review the work that we do to give us suggestions for anything that might. Do we have a sense of how? Do we have a sense of how many signs we would need, we, or how many signs? We felt that we would start. We call it phase one, and we'd start with probably ten. Okay. Okay. We have probably fifteen or more sites identified, but we'd start with ten, <coughs> make sure it works right, see if we have to tweak it a bit, and then. <coughs> I, have a, oh, sorry. No, that's okay. I have a question, Barbara, about the trails. Is it? I know it's the Greenway, but they want maps. The, the so who would be able have to? Them. Have them. Oh, I know. Them. Okay. Yeah. So okay. just going going through the list of things and, and being cognizant of the time. Um, all right. So we've got ten signs uh, to identify historical sites of importance on trails. Um, Barbara will get the the maps 
needed um, to bow. Um, we need uh, template letters of support for our various parties who we want to ask, which include um, uh, the Sorry. first like men, the school. Um, okay, so I'll work with the, the first like men's office. Um, Joy is going to... Uh, Masaro in the school. Joy's going to work with Masaro. <laughs> Do you want me to draft the, the template? Please. Yes. Okay. Oh, and then wow. the other thing, I was joking with Val, not to interrupt. We should the probably watch the area where we're going to do the science to make sure our phones work. <laughs> I'm thinking the same thing. I'm so, so just thing. a little nit, but some of hmm. the phone doesn't work. The QR code doesn't work. Right. Even on Masaro, like we, when I'm out with the kids in the house. Sorry, just for time, I want to bring us back into this. Okay. So we've got this itemized list of things we need to get done. Okay. So we've got um, maps that need to go. Barbara's going to get maps um, to Val, template letters. Uh, Rachel's going to draft a template letter um, for our partners to. Uh, so we can contact somebody from the high school. That'd be helpful. Right. Yeah. Ben, okay. Be. Joy, you're going to contact Masaro and the elementary school, is that mm -hmm. right? Beecher for support. Okay, and then um, Ben. Um, I can do the middle school as well. So if you want to do the high school, I'll do the elementary. Okay. Um, all right, so you'll do Beecher, uh, the middle school, and Masaro. Ben will contact um, the high school, and I think they have an environmental club, if that's helpful. I can contact Land Trust and um, Andy Danzig's out of the country, but I'll try to contact him. Okay. Um, and Sharon will contact the Land um, Trust and the Trail Master. About, about the maintenance? maintenance well, I can do the maintenance too. Yeah. I'll ask him yeah. about well, the maintenance. How frequently? Also. Well, that's what it has to do with the field. It has to do with the signs. With so, the Sharon, signs. do you want to draft um, a maintenance plan for the signs? With Rachel. <laughs> or Rachel. Even when she's here, she gets assigned anything. Okay. Oh, thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, so does uh, and this the has to be? Barbara's to the historical society. Yes, Barbara's got the letters to the historical society. Thank you for reminding me. Um, and uh, this has to be the final drop dead date for. Um, the application with D. What is the final date? March 11th. March 11th. March. March. Okay. So everything is, you know, the final is due by March 11th, which means special meeting. Yeah, everything yeah. else should be. Um, okay. I will get the response from this person about design. Can I? Can I? We, knowing that we have a long holiday weekend and that many people may be out of town, does it make sense that we try to have this done by Friday the 23rd or by the following week, make sure all of our documents are finalized by, oh, February 29th? Okay. Yes. Yes? Okay. Um, do, and, um, and so everything needs to be over to Tony no later than February 29th that we give him about a week and a half, is that enough? Well, we're going to answer Okay. All right. We can, we can, you know, obviously, it depends on how much of it is done, what he needs to do. But. Sure. And I'm just sending him an email last week. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm on my phone. Or, so. No problem, no problem. Okay. So, so. Let's, let's try to roll with, we're trying to have all of our finalized documents no later than February 23rd uh, to turn over. Should we have a special meeting? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I want more of a working meeting so that I can work with somebody. How about the subcommittee? <coughs> a subcommittee meet? A special group? Yeah, we'll work on that. I don't yeah. Sharon, Barbara, or is, is there a few folks who can get together and work together as the subcommittee? We're going to work on that. I don't know. I'm not committing yeah. to that yet, but I'm going to be there. Okay, I've got a maybe commitment. We've got a Val is in. Well, I feel like some Val, Rachel, and some Barbara. Other people mm -hmm. with um, more computer skills than that. So Fair enough. Fair enough. Does that sound good? The three of you will connect. Sure. Barbara's not okay. committing to that. <laughs> okay. Well, Barbara, you have key information. Rachel and Val are the information. Okay. Welcome to the library and work on it. That's fine. 
All right, our final documents um, returned to Tony by, uh, or, or at least to the subcommittee. By February so are we 23rd. giving a draft by the twenty third to by February twenty third. Are we giving a best intentions? So that's quick. Those yeah, letters of support Thursday. Yeah, and then there's two days Friday, there, right? no that's school. So so I'm trying right. to think tomorrow's Friday already. Well, the letters of well, those letters aren't as important as early as um, no. as long as someone commits to doing it, we know we're going to get them. Yeah, it's, it's all the other stuff. More of yeah. the framework stuff. So, do we want to say we want to try to have the letters by March first? Sure. Okay. So our documents by twenty third there, and then the letters of support by March first. Okay. And who are these going to? Um. Um, and everything needs to go back to Val as point person. Val gets the letters of support. That's the email address yeah, that we should tell to. people. So a question, mm -hmm. who is going to actually write in the format given the grant application? That would be Tony. Tony won't write that. Mm -hmm. Well, we have it all written, right? We, we have all that. The yeah, but there there is a grant application format that you have to fulfill. Generally, that's right. Yep. And the question is, who is going to write that? So we, if we have all the, the content in, in a document, then I, we can do it one of two ways. We can either just pull it into that grant format if that's easier for Tony, or just have it on the side and he can pull in what he wants. Which we'll let him decide. So yeah, we'll let him. chances are, you know, it would be best if we more we repopulate it as much as we can. Sure. Yes, it's um, we've got another grant that's a very important grant that's uh, due March first, mm -hmm. so and mm -hmm. Tony's under the gun right now. Mm -hmm. so, but yeah. this is important, so it's something we can find a way to get done as long as we know what, it, what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's exciting. Okay, well, we have let Paul wait for quite a while. Sorry about that, Paul. <laughs> Paul is an illustrious previous member of the Conservation Commission who has done a lot of good work on a lot of projects. And uh, he's willing to share it with us and help us continue forward. Are we ready? Hi, I'm Paul Harrigan. Um, I think I know everybody here in the room. Um, and uh, I wanted to thank the commission for inviting me to uh, speak to you tonight and also to update you on the progress that I'm making on the project that I was working on prior to the end of the year. Um, so the project that um, I'm going to talk about tonight is uh, the Woodbridge Conservation Community Project to enhance the habitat for priority birds on the country club property. Hopefully this will work. Um, so I'm going to try to be brief, but I'd like to cover just some background for the new members of um, what we've already discussed and some background on the project. Uh, discuss a little bit about the recommendations, uh, the grant that, um, that I'm suggesting that we would go after, um, and the roles and participants in the project and the next steps. Uh, one of the nice things about this project is we be able to pull in a number of groups within town to work on it, and um, I think it would really make a great community project. So a little background. Um, the former Country Club Woodbridge property is a very popular walking, hiking, and birding uh, destination in town. It's not just, it doesn't just attract people from here in Woodbridge, but it attracts people from outside town. Um, the property is listed on eBird, which is the Cornell Lab of uh, or, uh, or Ornithology um, website where birders identify uh, different species of birds that they uh, find. Um, and they label the Country Club property a hotspot. It's, um, you go out there on the weekend, uh, you'll see birders walking around. It's, it's kind of neat. Um, a member of uh, the Audubon Society described the property as, as a wondrous habitat for a wide range of residents of migrating birds. Uh, plus, he also commented on the wide variety of uh, plants that are uh, growing on the property. Um, 
the hotspot has identified um, 64 species so far uh, through the, um, the application, the, the Cornell application, uh, including some species that are uh, in, in decline in, in, in the state and in, in this area. A um, little more background on uh, the property. It's um, property is a critical link in uh, the town's state approved uh, greenway plan and we'll have a map in a moment to show where that links but it, it links to uh, properties in New Haven uh, through the Yale Preserve uh, to the south to um, the orange uh, the race for track in orange uh, uh, it has a link to the center of town here so it's really a, a very interesting connection point and as, as I mentioned earlier it's a very um, popular hiking and uh, walking area. Um, it's a, a corridor that um, is, the property itself is primarily um, uh, grasslands, uh, but the other properties that surround it are mostly uh, forested areas. Um, the Audubon Society conducted a, a forest bird habitat assessment in December of 2022. Um, and the Conservation Commission last year uh, um, had uh, extensively re reviewed and discussed um, the report. Um, just some uh, examples of some of the birds that um, are on the priority bird list. Uh, I won't spend too much time on these slides. I'll just, I can send it to everybody so they can review it uh, when they have more time. Um, just a little more background on the property. It's a pretty diverse property in that it has grasslands, it has forested areas, it has ponds. Um, and if you haven't walked the property, it's really uh, a very pretty area, quiet area. You know, once you get it in, in, into the property for a few minutes, it's like you're in the middle of nowhere. It's really kind of neat. Um, so the location, um, as I mentioned, um, abuts the the parkway and uh, the Yale Preserve uh, to the south, also to the south is the race brook track that leads into Orange and uh, to other water, other water company property. Um, to the north is um, West Rock and trails that lead over to the Fitzgerald property. Um, I know a lot of you are familiar with the Greenway, uh, but if you, um, put the greenway over this map, you would see kind of where it would fit in. Mm -hmm. um, so just to jump ahead in terms of what the Audubon assessment uh, had recommended, I think most of you have seen this study, um, but they recommended, they had three basic recommendations and I'm uh, proposing that we would uh, start with some of the easier recommendations to start with. Um, and that's essentially to soften the transition from grassed areas to wooded areas. So if you can envision where the fairways were, or the grassed areas or trees between the fairways, and what the Audubon Society had recommended is that there uh, be allowed young trees or shrubs to uh, fill in that area to soften the transition from treed areas to the grassed areas. Um, and. Uh, Again, some more pictures of some birds that uh, were mentioned. So in the Audubon uh, assessment, they made reference to the NRCS, which is the National Resources Conservation Service, which is a federal agency. Um, and they made some recommendations with regard to planting um, or allowing uh, pollinator plants and shrubs and such to, to grow. Uh, in this transition area. A um, little background on the NRCS grants. Um, the grants are not available to municipalities, but are available to licensees, leaseholders, and property owners. Um, so that's an important thing that will keep that in mind as I go through further, it'll make sense. Uh, the NRCS uh, provides grants that uh, has provided grants to organizations that hold licenses on municipally owned properties. They gave us an example of um, uh, 
a couple agreements that they had used with other uh, organizations that, for instance, uh, uh, um, had uh, farm animals uh, graze on uh, town-owned properties and there were grants that were available for that. So they said essentially we would just, we could use the same license agreement as a model and just change the activity that was going to be used and that would satisfy their requirements. So the, just to take one step back, a license is similar to a lease, except it, it's more defined in terms of what the leasee's responsibilities, or the licensee's responsibilities are. It doesn't give them the same rights, just it's a much more uh, 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 restricted. Uh, and so um, the grant itself uh, from the NRCS would be $700 per acre and it would have to be matched uh, by the uh, licensee. So for instance, the licensee in this case uh, I'm suggesting would be the land trust who has expressed interest in the project. Um, so it would be in total about $1,400 per acre. So if we did uh, two or three acres to start with, um, it would be say 40, 40 30, 40 bush bushes per acre. Uh, so not a large number, but at least somewhere to start with. Um, so granting a license um, to, an entity, to an entity to manage uh, the, um, the pollinators, again, would be a requirement uh, of the grant. And any grant would have to be approved by the Board of Selectmen and the uh, license to do this would uh, also have to be approved by the Board of Selectmen. Uh, the NRCS said that um, you know, it wouldn't have to be a long-term license to do it, but they want to see it at least one year and have an option to extend it for a second year. And that option could be a mutually agreed upon uh, extension. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the NRCS has indicated that the project would qualify for the grant. <coughs> the funds are available and encouraged uh, the uh, land trust to apply. Um, there would be no cost to the town, which is, I guess, an important element also. I encourage anybody to stop me if you have any questions as I go through this. Um, so the participants and roles, again, it, the idea is this would be a community project. Um, so the manager and funder of the project would be the Woodbridge Land Trust. Um, they would be providing half of the, um, the funding for it, and they would also uh, be the manager that would have the license with the town to plant the, um, the shrubs. Um, the planters would be uh, a youth group in town. The scout troops have expressed interest in it, uh, talked to the scout troop at the Congregational Church, the Catholic Church, and B'nai Jacobs. Uh, B'nai Jacob uh, troop is a little bit smaller, so I'm not sure how much of it they would uh, tackle on their own. But the project could be a, either an Eagle Scout project, uh, or it could be a troop-wide project, or it could be a joint troop project where troops uh, c collaborate. So, for, for, for instance, if it was too much for the B'nai Jacob troop to do by themselves, they could collaborate with the troop at the Congregational Church, mm -hmm. as an example. Uh, the Woodbridge Garden Club has expressed interest in helping uh, on the project and supervising and consulting on the planting techniques uh, for the youth group that uh, performs the planting. Um, and the facilitators uh, would be the Woodbridge Conservation Commission. It would be the group that would kind of get these parties together, working together. Um, so just you know, a couple more thoughts on the uh, vegetation that might be planted. Um, uh, I thought perhaps mountain laurel, because it is a shrub. It's pretty robust. It's something that uh, um, would have a great, a great chance for success in, in survival. Um, it's also a historic piece of property, and, and uh, as many of you may know, it was Roger Sherman's formerly, former family farm, and uh, having uh, a historic plant like that for the state of Connecticut, I thought would be an interesting 
Uh, to have what type of thing did you say that was? Uh, Mount Laurel. Thank you. There is Mount Laurel on the property too. There is, yeah. yeah. <coughs> um, so the next step um, would be for the Conservation Commission to um, uh, endorse the uh, project and that would be the first step for the land trust approaching the Board of Selectmen. So I'd like to take a break now and give people a chance to ask any questions they may have. I have a question. Um, when it's $700 or $1,400 with any project like that, there's trees, but there'd also probably have to be some fertilizer and some extra soil and stuff like that, so it might mean that there's a few less plants if that all has to be part of the 1400 Right, when I said, for, uh, when I said um, 30 to 40, I was figuring like $50 a plant. So it's probably going to be less. And with, um, you know, amendments and such, I, I think that would be probably a reasonable estimate. Um, the, way, the reason I came up with that estimate is the, the Boy Scout troops, or the Scout troops, rather, wanted to get a scope of how big the project would be and whether they would take more than one acre or just one acre to start with. My suggestion would be to... Let's start slow, make sure we get all the bugs uh, ironed out of it, and then next year they could do something uh, bigger if it was successful. Have you mapped out or targeted that acre or that one to two acres that you're suggesting? Um, not, not yet, but um, you know, having walked the property, I haven't uh, uh, identified or discussed which particular holes we would work on, but you know, in every fairway there is a treat area between the next fairway, and that's an opportunity to uh, to plant these bushes to or these shrubs um, to to soften that transition. So there's a lot of there's there's there isn't a shortage of opportunities of where to plant, but I haven't identified specifically which areas yet. Was there a time frame in terms of when the grant is, uh, when you have to apply by, and also when you would actually get the dollars and when the project would actually take place? So the idea would be to do the, um, the approval of the grants are kind of on a rotational basis. It's not a specific time period where you have to have it in, but um, they group grants together, they make decisions, and they group the next grant and make decisions. So it's kind of a rolling in batches, so in, in, batches in a rolling uh, time uh, timeline. In terms of the ideal time, it would be great to get it going now so that we would be in a position to plant in the spring. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be an ideal time. Uh, the next time after that that would be suitable for planting would be in the fall. Yeah. So the best time is to plant or in the spring or the fall. And so, um, uh, April, excuse me? April, May, June. Right. And it's actually, the fall right. is optimal for shrubs that you're right. talking about. Exactly. Right. Even better than the fall. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay. more, more. And we could use the, um, the spring to uh, you know, identify a, a good area and try to clear out some of the invasives in the area so that we could, whatever is planted in the fall, more chance to survive in better years. Right. Less competition. There's a lot of competition yeah. right now. And you can also the prepare the soil and prepare the site. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. so that would be it's convenient. It's right. Long, right. I just don't know how much Boy Scouts are active in the summer. Right, if they're off, off doing other things, right. Well, one, one thing about the project is, uh, you know, if each troop took or uh, an Eagle Scout took one acre, it's not that many bushes really to plant. I mean, it is a project for a few weekends but, or a couple weekends, but it's not a huge project. And you said the um, Garden Club was interested in supporting. Right, in terms of providing advice. Um, how deep the hole should be, you know, how yeah. far they should be spread apart, what kind of amendments that could, you know, should be used. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so it would be, I think it would be a project where we could get a lot of, um, a lot of community members involved in, in, uh, in conservation. So the next step would be making a motion um, if the commission feels needed. And then um, that would then empower the land trust 
to approach the board of selectmen. So then the next step would be for the land trust to get organized and go before the board, the, the board of selectmen. Okay. Uh, the idea is they would probably have a draft of what they think that license agreement might look like. Okay. So they can propose what uh, what they would like to, to do. Mm -hmm. And the license agreement would essentially say that the land trust was responsible for managing the pollinators on the property. So they would be responsible for this this project. Um, at that point, once they have the license in place, they can apply to the NRCS for the grant. Um, and then at that point, you know, once the grant is awarded, then that's when the Boy Scouts would become involved. Doing a project like this doesn't put any restrictions on that property? It does not. The only thing is that they would manage the uh, project for the term of the, of the license, which would be one year to start with, with a mutual option to extend for another year. Okay. So if they did it for a year and the town decided not to go forward with it beyond the year, that would be the end of it. If they decided to go on for it beyond the first year, then the land trust could say, we'd like to do it or we don't want to do it. And then they, if they want to do it, then they continue again for the next year. Okay. If they don't, then that's the end of it. Just stop maintaining that the pollinators are, um, the shrubs are happy. Basically, that's the. Yeah, so there, there. Uh, doesn't seem to be any maintenance. Yeah, for a mountain, for say like a mountain borough, there's not much maintenance to it. Well, there is, just because the invasives there are just rampant, but um, they'll choke out. You know, if if nothing's done, they'll choke them out. So that would be on the land trust to have. Some sense of what, you know what the preparation would be. Well, that might also depend on the site. Some sites might have more invasives than other, and choosing a site with less might be. I suspect the site would be important for a lot of reasons. But yes, I agree with you in terms of that's one of the things. And now it's not really a good time to assess the site. Give it another three weeks. You can assess it easily and maybe get a jump on getting. Some yeah, of those invasives out of there. It's going to be 40 degrees on Friday, so who knows what it's going to look like next week. So, oh, exactly. Oh, <laughs> um, in the, the lease or the license is granted, the license has to be granted before the, the grant can be applied for? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, if the license is granted and the, the grant is not approved, is there a plan for that? So, uh, the land trust. Uh, would like to get the grant, but they don't need it. Mm -hmm. okay. So they could go forward and fund the whole thing if they decided to. Um, hopefully they will get the grant. Um, I've spoken to the person from the NRCS several times, and they were encouraging that, uh, that the project, they thought it was a good project and it would qualify for the grant, but you know, they can't commit, it, commit to it until it's awarded, so. Well, thank you. I think the, uh, if I might add, the, I know from having a conversation on a, uh, with regard to Solar Country Club, which was just, um, and was, it was put on a, uh, in a proposal, but it was really illustrative. It wasn't indicating that we needed to put it anywhere, but there was a considerable amount of concern on the part of the central, in regard, the board of selectmen as to where that was going to go. I expect that there will be the same types of questions and concerns in terms of where this would go. So mm -hmm. I think it'll be important to understand what the potentials are even before you go there. I just want to make sure, you know, I want sure. to make sure everybody's in, in Well, there's, eight, that. there's 18 holes, so there's a lot of options. I agree, particularly if it's only one anchor. Maybe I think we should, should take some, yeah. some photos should be taken and so, so it's the board of Or just sure. flag an area, just, you know, that so that people have a visual and they know where I think it would be helpful for even the Boy Scouts to know what they're signing up for because when we just say acre, it, it, you don't really know what you're getting into. So the acre is uh, the way the NRCS um, does their grants. Funding. That's that's the funding uh, metric that they use is we will give you so much per acre. It doesn't mean that it's spread over an acre. It just means that that acre is only going to get $700 from NRCS. Um, might be 200 yards of actual whatever you're doing. Well, it can't serve those 50 bushes. It's probably not, not, not a huge, mm -hmm. not a huge area, but it's that's the amount of the 
grant. So for instance, if there's a tree line on a fairway, uh, maybe for 40 or 50 feet along that, that, that tree line, you plant shrubs. On the next fairway, you do the same thing. So it's not like we're covering the whole, whole area with, with shrubs. It's a relatively small number given dollars that are available. Um, is it restricted? If it, they're giving us seven hundred dollars, the grant will be granted seven hundred dollars per acre. But can you spread it over three acres, or can you only do it within one acre? Um, so uh, the idea was that we would probably do multiple acres, so maybe two or three acres, no, but depending on what how many. Uh, but let's. Uh, what I'm trying to understand is if all those forty shrubs need to be put in one. If you if we have a hundred acres. Even though we're getting three acres worth, can we spread it over six acres? No, the license would be for one acre. Okay, so it would be specific or whatever, to that. You know, whatever the agreement comes out. So it would be limited to whatever the license is associated with the park directly. No, I mean we could. I mean we could. I, we haven't gotten into that detail. We could uh, certainly um, <coughs> we could limit it to just one acre. But if it were more than one acre, and the project was successful, they could do another acre the following year, another acre right. the following year. Mm -hmm. And of so course, the, the thing is, the acre, I mean, we think of acres as square. It right. can be linear. Yeah. <laughs> and one acre can go a long ways, but linear ones. If you're planting shrubs along the tree line, it can go. That's very true, yeah. Much further than you think. And what is the, you know, a lot of times, the, you know, they're going to give you the money, but are there any other stipulations or you know, kind of checks and balances if they want, you know, evidence to know that their money was spent the way we promised it would be, you know? I think, yeah, there's some, there's some checks on it, that yes. Be, you yeah. Know, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry, I have to leave, but I just want to thank you very much. You should make a motion. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Come again. You too. Yes. Come next time. So, <laughs> any, any questions in particular from the newer members? Because we've talked about it. We talked about it quite a bit last year. Um, you guys have any questions I can answer on it? I mean, I think it's, it's really cool that you put all this together. Um, I, I guess I had a sort of a larger bigger picture question is that, I mean, this property in general is this unique habitat, but it's eventually going to turn back into forest unless there's some sort of management of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's, I mean, this is sort of way beyond what what you're presenting on, but I don't know if you have thoughts or, or if you've sort of thought about how to, it'd be nice to maintain the actual, the early successional habitat over the whole property. Sure. The Audubon Society had made some recommendations in terms of mowing. Um, Twice a year. Yeah, they call it yeah. the drunken method, where they kind of do this zigzag, zigzag just right. to try to keep it. But Mother Nature's, it's so, I don't know if you've taken a walk through there, but it's so vast of an area, and it's been left to its own devices uh, to do what it wants to do for so long that it's well on its way and it won't stay successional for very long. You know, it'll go. Um, and the invasives are a real problem. Like, I'm, I'm gonna scream and yell and be the alarmist on the invasives because I just walked there in November and it's, it's bad, you know, and and what's bad about that is that the, all that is going to go, you know, everywhere else. So you can lead a, a whole thing in three weeks on looking at starting. Um, I wish, but you need machinery to do it at this yeah, point. It's, it's really, really bad. So the town has done some mowing on the property, but um, they haven't done that recently, I don't think. Mm -hmm. So what's our next? Since it's almost nine o'clock. So uh, uh, it looks like there's. Some I guess the next question for our commission is, does this sound like something we are interested in that we'd like to endorse? And if so, um, then someone can make a motion um, for the Conservation Commission to endorse the project to enhance the habitat for priority birds on the country public woodbridge property by planting native pollinator shrubs to soften the transition from grass areas to the wooded areas. 
that the nomination? Or I will. Are you making that nomination? I was not. No, no, no. no I'm sorry. I just read it. I'll make the motion. Okay. Okay. As Barbara. As Barbara. <laughs> and I'll, I'll second it. Valerie. Okay. All right. So we have a motion and a second on the table. Is there any discussion? I don't think that we're, as a master gardener and somebody who's becoming, in the process of becoming a pollinator steward, I have a lot of concerns about what needs to be done there. Um, and that it just feels like, um, I, I appreciate you know the effort and, and the idea, but it just feels like, how do I say this? Um, almost like it's, it would be a, a bit of a waste because there's a very big, it, it would be a big effort to even do this and it would feel like it wouldn't make any difference, you know, like a significant amount of difference. And, and, and I would worry that the effort would kind of be overrun by other things and it, you know, almost like disappear because it won't be managed. I just don't feel like we have a, a solid plan of like, if we were to plant, do these plantings and will we be able to, you know, maintain that environment that they need for the first couple of years as they, they you know, just take hold yeah. and establish, right? So I just, I feel like we need to do more work and, and, and maybe even find out like, is, is that the step, you know, that we want to take? Is that step one or is that step seven? You know, like maybe there are a lot of other things we need to do and could use monies and, and have those efforts before we even get to planting those plantings. So that's just where I'm at with it. Go. Just make a comment. Uh, the project wouldn't cost the town any money. Um, okay. I think. The, the part, there's a couple parts that one is getting other people involved and making them aware of the property and the work that it needs because I think in some ways, Joy, you're right, but brush timing that whole land, doing the whole thing, it's not happening. So putting something in there that could possibly propagate itself if it had enough, you know, so it could continue to flourish could be a dent in the in bases and you know, I think that's where we need some experts. What shrubs will really work? Will they, can they multiply? Can, you know, can, can they help do heat? Yeah, what but I think happen? that's, yeah. you know, they, the land trust can always decide they don't want to do it if they can't find the right things to do. Right. But we, without this, we can't even start the conversation. So at least it's a step in the right direction, heading down, starting something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think it's, Good to do something. Um, I also, I mean, I, I agree with Joy that it would be nice to be <coughs> part of a larger master plan, uh, but I also think that that can take a long time, and we don't know, no one is making a master plan right now, so, and you've got a plan, so I think, I mean, I would, I definitely think it's a good way to, to go with your plan to go forward, but we should be thinking bigger picture as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, to that end, before, well, this I guess can be part of the discussion is Kathy and Paul. Or Paul brought this to. There's an article in the New York Times about letting um, golf courses go back into natural environments and examples of where that's happened all over the country, and a little bit about the management of it. I've given you that article, or we've given you that article, and it'll be worth looking at because it's kind of inspiring in terms of how towns have taken that on in different ways. And I'm sure there's much more detail that we can find out, but so that could be in reference. So just to be clear, we have a motion still on the table or a discussion of that motion. I would like to read through <laughs> this material, you know, and, you know, table it um, until I, we have some more information. I've done some research on this too, but this article literally just came out today. Yes. That is crazy. I know, but so I don't I think tabling is a good idea because our time 
is of the essence of those that make the decision. Oh, oh so, sorry, we said motion of the spring, though. I think the doors we would do oh, it at the hall, so I think we have time. So we get to the next level, the next stage, right? So the motion has already been made and it's been seconded, so now we're just voting. We're in, sorry, we're in discussion. Moses, does anybody else have any other questions or discussion on the motion? I just think that I go to the Woodbridge Country Club with my husband. I had not been aware of it. I went a couple of years ago, and it just gave me more awareness of what needed to be done. And I think that if we start a planting program more people will come, more people will, oh, what, what is this infrastructure here? Let's, you know, let's get the paint off the walls, let's get the graffiti down, let's, it doesn't have to, it, it could just be much more uh, manageable and, appe and appealing than it is now. So I just think that if you have people going there, for whatever reason, more traffic, more awareness, more exposure, little by little we can make this a little bit more appealing than it is now, because right now it is not appealing at all. Okay. Exactly. No, I just think a natural reaction is getting behind something like this is important because I think it's another way to highlight the gem of a property that this is, the natural resources that are there, and the need to protect it. So by having this conversation, getting behind this idea is another way to do that. And through the project, even if it is a temporary thing, um, there are the other things, the other concerns might get addressed as a part of it. Maybe it won't, maybe that's me being too ambitious, but that's where my mind is coming. And I kind of look at it from a different perspective in the sense that I feel that, okay, if we get all of these bushes planted, it might help some of the kestrels <laughs> to survive a little bit more and a little bit longer and have a few more around to right. get it. Even if they go away in two years, at least one batch of them has has made it, so they can. You know, um, I mean, everything is temporary. <laughs> it's true. All right, this might be helpful. So, um, Paul, does the land trust have any opinion on sort of the long-term management of the, the overall property? Uh, the land trust um, several years ago proposed uh, conservation easement on the property. But what about in terms of like managing the the habitat type? I mean, what, you know, what 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 would they like to see? Would they like to see it go back to forest, or you know, would they like to see some sort of you know management to keep the shrub habitat? Or I'm just curious, like they haven't they haven't I talked about that detail. They've gone. And this is kind of still in the early stages. As you said, there isn't a master plan for managing the the property. This is just the first baby step. All right, seeing no further discussion, we have a motion on the table and a second to move forward. All those in favor? All those opposed? No, we have one opposed. Joe? Any abstentions? Okay, the motion passes. Well, thank you so much thank for you. having me. Thanks. Um, thank and I enjoy you. working with you on this project. Thanks, Paul. I appreciate Thanks. it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Paul, the next steps you will get us, you, you will send that information over to the land trust and let us know what you need from us to move forward when you're, they're going to make their recommendation or their request to the board of selectmen. Right. So, the next step would be for the land trust to request a license from the board of selectmen. Okay. I'll work with the land trust to, to bring that forward. Okay, and it sounds like from this conversation there were a lot of questions that probably should be answered before they go to the Board of Selectmen to strengthen that request. Um, so it seems like there's... Like you know, a site-specific idea. Yeah, site, yeah specifically um, you know, about de addressing, you know, the invasives and, you know, thinking about maintenance um, and, you know, certainly about what you know, the recommendations are for the property. So if, if you have any questions from the commission about uh, those specific questions or things that you think would strengthen that, please, please reach out to us and let us know. Okay, great. I will. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. All right. And we are just like that off of our time schedule. My apologies to everybody watching this fun, eventful evening. Okay. Um,
motion passed. Great. All right, so the Coupop report property category review. Um, Barbara, you attended their special meeting? I did. No, I did not. No? Did. You attended their regular meeting? I did. I did. You attended their regular meeting. I attended their special meeting and I reported our findings on the uh, five properties that we reviewed and they listened and um, they listened, like, they, they, they just received it and they're, they didn't really give any response. Okay. So that all went well. Cookout properties, as I understand it, they are going to, in their report, send everything that they received to the board of selectmen. So yeah. they are particularly are acting on it, they're simply taking yeah, it, including it, it. right? So that covers five, also with bridge conservation response team, bridge conservation commission's response team. Is there anything, Diana, that we're doing with number five, or is that covered in number four? No, no, no. That was um, that was covered. Yep. Okay. We, we had made this agenda prior to deciding to have a special meeting, so those responses were submitted. Yep. Meeting meeting schedule. Um, this was just on the two meetings that were coming up that we now have in the past, so we can move on from that too. Uh, all right, the plan, uh, the conservation plan and development timeline update. Um, just the last that we heard is that they were reviewing some other RFPs that had gone out um, to select a consultant to work with the town on the conservation plan and development. Um, when we reach out to TPNZ, we will request an update on that as well and ways that we can and support. At some point, well, in our March meeting, this sort of dovetails, we're going to bring, we talked, they want to get everyone's other input to bring our past chairman, Tim, in, who is doing a review of all the properties that are town owned. That is one of our responsibilities as a conservation commission to do, and we have the last part to finish. So he's going to sort of give us a download on all that he did, and then that will be information that will be useful for our portion of this um, conservation plan of conservation development that's going to be redone in 2025. And our chapter, at least our natural resources and open space, are chapters five and six. And I think there's another chapter towards the end that will relevant. So in our meetings May and June, we may need to start looking at those chapters once we get some of the, finish the, our understanding of how we think the town property should be utilized and the compensation we can serve. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So um, that kind of fits into the conservation development, but that will be something that's coming up that we will have more information to utilize once we get this other piece finished. New business. Okay, finally, right? New business. Okay, the uh, Country Club of Woodbridge RFP submissions review. Um, we were requested after our last meeting, the uh, first selectman reached out and asked if we could review the RFP submissions that were returned to the town. Um, there were six of them. Um, they have asked for our input by the uh, March or April meeting on what we thought of those RFP submissions. Um, does any, has anybody had a chance to take a look? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Does anyone have any specific thoughts? Did you say that response has to be by? Uh, to the Board of Selectmen, they said March, but I had asked for a little bit of time, so I think it's about April. Well, and they five. did not review them. They were supposed to start reviewing and eliminating a few this last meeting when they didn't, so it wasn't even on the agenda. Well, they had a big, a lengthy agenda at the Board right. of Selectmen last time. Yeah, I think there were four hours last night. Yes. So it's budget season. Well, I watched the coupon meeting, and the way they did it is they went around the horn and they eliminated a few that they knew that they wouldn't consider, and then just chatted about what their top three was, and then would move forward with the recommendation that way. So I don't know if that's helpful. Mm -hmm. 
That is cool. Yeah. Has, has that's what I, that taken? was what I was thinking. The ones that had were very much about conservation and you know had Process. done wonderful things you know in, the, in that way um, would be are considered you know recommendations. But but I didn't notice that one of them was asking for a monetary amount. That she's anyone really seen that? I think it was forty thousand dollars. Just to do the proposals so that they These are, were. That's going to cost two hundred thousand. So, so any of these that we go with are it's going to be like a two hundred thousand dollar bill to the town just so that they can give the town a big plan. Oh, I, I didn't see. I didn't see that in. Yeah. So, um, would it be helpful? for uh, members to have like a scoring rubric? Do you want to talk about maybe some of the criteria that we would think would be important from the Conservation Commission perspective when we are reviewing these? I think that is that important. Is a wonderful they, um, they're not apples to apples though. So it's mm -hmm. right. so yeah. I guess the, the first thing we could do is look at what the RFP says and see who actually answers the question of the RFP. And you're not because it's our specific rubric, right? So if we gave that to them, because obviously Coupop is going to have a different set of why they would make recommendations uh -huh. of, our, of the ones they choose, we'll have ours, you know, like, and then we could have just kind of submitted like that. Mm -hmm. Ben, did you want to add something? Sure, yeah. I mean, I. I mean, I, I read through them all, and it sort of um, struck me that it's pretty easy to evaluate them just on whether they actually answer the RFP or not. Um, and I felt like you could kind of put them into three different groups, and there were two that really didn't get the RFP, I don't think. Which ones? Uh, well, if, we, if you want to get specific, this is just my opinion, okay. but I felt like the Woodfield Preserve Initiative it's a nice idea, but that's not what the RFP was asking for. Mm -hmm. um, and then O'Riordan Miyagi. Um, yeah, that was too boilerplate. Yeah, I, it seemed, seemed like they just kind of uh, put a, 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 you know, a letter, letter at the top of something that they send to everybody. Um, so, and then I felt like the next two, um, Cooper Robertson and Robert Orr. Cooper Robertson was a little more organized, but it, it, I didn't feel like they had a real well-structured plan to actually work with the town to figure out what they wanted. Like Cooper Robertson, for instance, um, they mostly talked about talking to the, you know, like the town staff, but not the actual community. And then the two that I actually thought were pretty good, just in terms of answering the RFP, was BFJ planning and Peary? Pier, yeah, it's Peary. Yep. Peary, yeah. yeah. I thought Peary was the most mm -hmm. specific, but what I didn't like about Peary was that they didn't, they had general, they seemed very attentive to try to get a consensus, but they didn't have individual interviews, and I think that that would be appropriate to have, you know, the land trust interview the head of land trust, interview the head of stakeholders, you know, that rather than just having general public all, you know, or staff all have people input. But I did think that they they really understood the dynamic of what's held us up. Yeah, I thought I thought they were both pretty good. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I actually leaned a little more towards BFJ just because I well, felt like they I had a as as better it. fleshed out plan. But I, I felt like, uh, you know, that was sort of the initial reading. You know, like you, you could probably, I almost feel like I, if I was doing these, I would just sort of like now review BFJ and Peary, Peary. <laughs> Peary, you know, to actually decide between those two and sort of like probably say the other four are not really worth looking into. But that's that was just my opinion. So um, I sorry, I think that's pretty much what Cooper was also mm -hmm. doing. Same thing, same things. I could be wrong because it's been a month and a half. <laughs> I agree with Ben, um, I, and I know I'm still learning on the newbie, but Perry seemed to be um, 
the most organized and just um, thoughtful in their in their uh, proposal and um, put a lot. It looked like they put a lot of care into it. And if you look, nuance. Look, if you, and if they do their work that way, that's impressive. And they already have a relationship with the town. You know, it's a different type of work, but it's um, still a, a relationship that we have. Some of the people that they have um, assigned to this project are interesting too, including um, an individual who serves on Ned Lamont's historic. but the historic commission. I think there's one more word I'm missing though. So um, very well thought out and deliberate. And again, um, they know the dynamic of the town and they seem ready to be able to address that and maybe seem the most viable to help us get to that next level. So maybe if we all look at all of them a little bit next year, next for next month, and with the understanding that lots of us have those two seem more likely and look at those a little more deeply and then have a more in-depth discussion about it next week, month, would that be good? Tomorrow? No. <laughs> <laughs> and the rubric would be super helpful too. Mm -hmm. Okay. What level of feedback are we <coughs> asked to provide? Like, here's the one you should pick for. I think, I think they're just being thoughtful to include the mm -hmm. one and then we are a big player in this, but. Well, um, you know, that is, as I read earlier, the responsibilities of our commission, you know, weigh in on decisions like this. So um, we would be being asked, I would imagine, wetlands would be being asked, TPNC, and Coupop, I'm not sure if others are. Finance. How is that point of uh, Board of Finance, right? So, um, to, to, so depending on, um, sorry, I just pulled the other piece up. Um, um, I'm actually looking for the language of the RFP itself. <coughs> Yeah. 
sorry, what, what was that? Mm -hmm. Sorry, that's yes. uh, <laughs> no, Yeah, I actually answer an RFP, yeah. I, I was just, sorry, I was in the middle of a thought of, uh, I was thinking there should be something about, does this group have like the capacity to address the conservation? You know, like, like the like, skill and yeah, like like some of these experience. You know, they're clearly they build buildings, but right. you know, they, they don't really have a conservation manager on staff or something. But mm -hmm. others others might. So so actually having those skills in house or or even highlighting those skills. Yeah, I have a, I have a question, and I I'm not sure how they post their proposal of. But what were their thoughts on the Woodfield Preserve Initiative? Which yeah. I think, yeah, I believe she was a former uh, conservation person from Woodbridge. She was, that was her proposal, if I remember correctly. So I don't believe she was. Uh, yes, she was. She, she is. She, yeah. she is a Wood, she's a Woodbridge, still a Woodbridge resident, I Absolutely. believe. Yes. And she is a former conservation committee so that was the Woodfield Preserve Initiative and I sort of I thought that was an interesting one that what might have been aligned with some of our interests so well, I think what it was aligned with our interests so this, but it's not aligned with the RFP because it's not really it it's it's not really addressing the RFP as what the town was asking for but it is a proposal of what you could do with that space you know. has everyone read the actual RFP itself I did but like months ago when Beth first yeah, yeah. Did you have submitted it from yeah yes yeah, yeah. great yeah. just so we can see I, saw these. I feel like it was in <laughs> September August or September they had submitted that do you have it with you Diane oh. I'm just asking for it now Allison can get that to you probably. That's who I'm asking. Yeah. Do you, do you have it? Do you have it? I don't understand. Yeah, because if, if you were to ask me personally, you know, like, what's a nice vision, I think the Woodfield Preserve is a good vision. Yeah. And um, so I, I wonder if we could make some sort of comment on that, like, if, yeah. if other people feel the same way, like, this doesn't actually answer the RFP, but this is the sort of plan we would love to see, something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it might be There's worth no just highlighting. They can that. save themselves right. 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 Yeah, yeah, right. right. Well, um, that's what I think is that some market research would be really interesting to see if 70% of people really think that mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. and Make their job easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really do think that it's where there's a lot of people who care a lot about the Woodbridge Country Club, and it's going to be. So I, I agree, including it, even though it is yeah. a, doesn't fit the. It's so actually bad. That's kind of Isn't the way you, you know, should like really go to to actually address each one of them and 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 address. R pluses and minuses on them. From our perspective. From our perspective. So we would we certainly would talk about, about the, the Woodfield one and, and just say it doesn't particularly address as we see. But it addresses what the, many people do want. <laughs> but it's yeah, it it does it speaks to the population. Right. Um so I'll just include in here something else about um you know, if, if people want to make comments about what they did, like about a specific response, um, on response to your proposal. Yeah, it probably is a good idea to include something for each proposal about our reasoning. Yeah, our reasoning. For, yeah. For it's well, what we liked or what we did not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It could be quite yeah. short, right? This didn't feel like yeah. this is anything mm -hmm. boilerplate. I don't mm -hmm. know that they understand our needs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So all right, so for our scoring criteria right now, we have um, the way that we're evaluating these submissions are ways um, that they plan to engage with multiple um, town uh, commissions and stakeholders um, about, you know, about the project. Um, okay, uh, how, uh, how 
strongly you're advocating for environmental conservation, um, how well they answered the RFP, um, the skills and experience it has to address, address the conservation aspect of the property, um, what we liked about the response and the proposal, and what we did not like about the response of the proposal. Um, and the other thing I would say is like, do, do they have a, like a real like management plan step by step guide of this is this is our these are our actions this is how we are going to um, move through the phases of the proposal. I'd like to put a, I like to have a management plan but I also think it needs to be flexible to accommodate the data that they get that they can alter it given that it may not fit what they had anticipated would be the so a management plan um, and how they, how they plan to incorporate input and alter the plan in town and stakeholders into the plan for alternate. I've had a um, somewhat difficult way of analyzing each firm because I had to look at their organizational chart and it seemed like they were some of them were assembling teams mm -hmm. that maybe they weren't a coherent group and oh, you have the planning and designing and then you had different aspects of it but they may have been getting coming from third parties or and then I well, they were like subcontractors they were subcontractors consultants did we see yeah. consultants that's what it seemed like and were, did two of them use the same construction firm was it Link? i thought that two yeah. of them used the same i saw the same photo right so we have to <laughs> i think i think this is a big project and i don't know if they were all there's parts of it that they were coming from other places. That wasn't all one intact, I don't believe, firm. They were getting consultants, they were using this person, they were using that person. So for me, reading their resumes, it was difficult to ascertain what was the experience of the entire firm. Because I was reading one did the Yale residentials, one did the Yale golf course, one did, I was reading their resumes. A lot. Like, it was difficult because I, because I don't believe it was just one firm. I believe there was a lot of consultants involved yeah. in each one of them. Mm -hmm. That's that's the way. And who knows how good a connection they have, or how well versed they are working with each other, or coordinating. Right. Writing that reports. was another concern that I had. That some of them may this was seems like this, but I think some of them phrased it. We assembled a group of professionals. I, I think I read that yeah. a couple of times, but they were literally assembling professionals just to pre uh, offer this proposal. And would they use the same professionals in their plan for their actual? And have they worked together? Before? Right. Have they worked exactly. together? Exactly. Have they what worked they together produced? before? And then they had a, a project better. manager yeah. that was one. It, it, this is a very developing property is very difficult and. So that was why I found it a little difficult to assess each one because it wasn't just, oh, you go to one store, stop and shop, and everything. That's not what we were looking at. We were looking at a different type of organization. And some of them may have, they're getting people from different places. Because with engineers, they all work on different projects. And that's what we were saying. What project did I work on? And that's what they were putting down, the project that they had worked on. I was more concerned about a cohesive firm. So, so that might be one and of our... I think one of the things from the past, and I think other people might know more, is that they chose a firm, and then they found out a lot more information later on, and they found out that the firms were not what they had right. said they were. And, and right. you know, $100,000 that, later, that's kind of right. a wasteful thing. That a is. lot of town energy. Like, this is taking our energy. And, yeah. Right. So I think... Um, asking the selectmen to scrutinize, you know, because they're in a position to have somebody really read the resumes and go, go into it deeper. I think that is something that has been a like there of have, times. It almost feels like these were given to us, but have they been vetted at all? Yeah. This you know, because maybe there, there aren't even six. Maybe there's really three, you right. know, that are 
legit. And uh, yeah, we'd like to know. They often did the court in the past. It seems they did not vet them before they chose someone. And that's that's where we ran into trouble. A lot of time. Yeah. Isn't it? The construction companies did a lot of the experience, but they were putting, like the one was Tuho, I think it was, and they were putting their experience, they were using, it was very difficult, and they were using Langland's experience, and they were using, and they were putting that in there. Did you see how they, it was different companies, and they were assembling it? It wasn't just, and maybe that's how it is with engineering, and maybe that's how it is with construction, so I'm trying to figure out are we evaluating the designer and the planner, or are we designing the construction? Or are we evaluating the construction company? Or what are we exactly evaluating? That that's what my issue was when I was reading them. I was mostly focused on the design because I feel like that's been so amiss. But once the design gets approved, how it gets enacted is critical, right? So. Right. Should we add, I was looking at it like where, which of these firms have done a project. I was looking for some evidence of something they've done that would fit here, you know, that encompasses all the things that I think that we want it to be. That's really hard too, you know. I'm searching, somebody's done it somewhere, you know. But it sounds like we need to have like a maybe pick three and have even in oral interviews, rather than just looking at someone's, because you can learn a lot by asking some maybe probing questions, if that's allowed. That's, well, the board is likely to do that. Oh, OK. We're going to do better. I think we can provide them with questions. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. Should we continue this for next? So we're going to come back with our sort of pros and cons. Yep. So and then we'll compile that on some sort of rubric. Then you'll send us the rubric too, so that we can do a little thing. I'm going to send this out to everybody probably this evening. Um, and put more <coughs> We can either choose, maybe as a group, we just sort of decide if we know that there's six in there. Uh, you list them one through six, number one being the strongest, six being the least strongest out of all six uh, submissions um, for each of the categories that, that we list. And then put your notes next to that for why you liked or did not like something, all of them, or what made you think about it. Okay? Does that sound good? Would that be helpful? Mm -hmm. Great. You'll write those thoughts when you write the name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we have about five more minutes of coherence. Yep. Uh, uh, okay. Six. <laughs> you got it, though. You got it. Trail okay. funds application deep. Is that what we already covered? Mm -hmm. We already covered that. Mm -hmm. Subcommittee trail preservation and conservation. Yeah, I mean, I would recommend that all of those be hold for our March meeting. And is everyone okay with Tim Austin coming to our March meeting and talking about the projects he was involved in that he's passing or calling, not passing off to us? That'll help. Yes. Yeah. Our new members tremendously. Yeah. Are we allowed to speak to him before the meeting? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Of course. And if you want. He's going to be away for a bunch of time. Oh. But I think he'd be content. Mm -hmm. um, we're moving on to member comments. Hi. <laughs> I think we've been making comments. Have we? I've been chatting. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. I have um, a comment. Do you have a comment? Yes. I think this is really exciting. I think we're really, you know, starting to work together well. It's kind of cool. <coughs> Ben, do you have any comments? So did you want me to say something about uh, so You can do it now, you can say it next time, sure. whatever you like. I'll be super fast because my kids are 
big enough for me, I think. Uh, <coughs> well, we had to write for like two hours last time, so that was oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Sorry. <laughs> Not to make any of you feel bad. Well, that was short to me. Oh, that's so sad. Um, so, so, I, um, so Paul actually went over a lot of this for me. Um, but I read the Autobahn report and was kind of intrigued by this, um, the fact that it's this very rare early successional shrubland kind of forest that's all, it's represented by only about 3% of, of Connecticut. And, um, and I also remember reading that DEEP was going around and like, cutting down trees and actually creating this type of habitat. So, you know, there's a lot of value, a lot of conservation value. And um, so I contacted one of the authors, uh, Rosa Goldman, and I spoke with her uh, just, just to kind of get more details about you know, their thoughts on the property and kind of how the report came about and that sort of thing. So uh, I'll, I'll just sort of summarize uh, into sort of three kind of bullet points that, that, that I think highlight the discussion is is one that it's, it is a really rare habitat type, so so that makes it sort of special. Um, the other thing she mentioned is that just because of the the history of how trees were planted and mowings and stuff like that, there's a lot of habitat diversity. So there's all these different microhabitats, which is very good for biodiversity. Um, so you know, planted trees, ponds, streams, forest engines, a lot of interesting topography. Um, the other interesting thing is that. Uh, since it's connected to this heavily forested corridor, um, it serves more than just these like shrub species. So like uh, interior forest birds that you know breed you know deep in the forest, they actually come out and feed in these like early successional habitats. So having something like that available to them can uh, promote uh, you know nest success and that sort of thing. Um, I also spoke to her about. Um, whether, you know, so this was Audubon, they do birds, but there's other species or other taxa that, that use this sort of um, land. So I, she gave me the name of a deep person I can talk to, but, you know, there's, there's uh, you know, so, so one example is the a New England cottontail, which is a species of concern in Connecticut. They also use this sort of um, habitat. Um, so anyway, that was just sort of the what I found when I talked to Rosa today, and uh, I plan on following up with some deep people just to kind of see what they think about the property. And Great. I, I'm also so uh, she mentioned uh, this NRCS money that you can get to sort of maintain the property, uh, but I also want to check with Deep to see if there's any, you know, any funds from them or grants or whatever. Because I mean, if they're they're cutting down forest to create this habitat. We already have it. Then you know maybe there's some funding there to maintain it. And maybe there's money. That three percent is really interesting. Like if we're so unique, and I don't doubt that we are in Connecticut, whose land is so scarce, right? Um, could we profit from that somehow? I mean, I know that sounds terrible, but like figure out a way where people are even aware that it, it's here and sort of figure out like how they could help us manage it so that it can remain. You know, maybe we're looking at this the wrong way of like it's a Woodbridge thing. Maybe this is a state of Connecticut thing. Maybe it's even a national thing or a regional thing and we could, you know, really get some help. Yeah, that's like some substantial help. That's you know? something else that I I asked her if there was any sort of connectivity or spatial analyses that sort of, you know, looked at connectivity between, you know, shrubland patches, and she wasn't aware of anything. But that's that's the sort of thing that Deep might do. So I'm going to follow up on that, just kind of see, you know, where. And maybe you should, if you're doing this, we're both trying to connect with Kimberly, Kim Bradley, at Deep, because she's in charge of the land, the trail maintenance grant. But she's very much involved in that. She might be a good person to contact. And I can't remember what I can do. It's almost like, you know, the person that first discovered the dinosaur bones, you know what I mean? Like, it could be like a really significant thing that we're sitting on that we've been grappling with as a town that's very contentious and 
and it's uh, you know something that other people beyond here should know about. Well, so thank you, Ben. That's like a, a really cool perspective I had. You know, one thing that's there. Uh, was brought up very much. We people have looked at the world and it's its connection to the Native Americans too. Mm -hmm. so the, the, there are absolutely parts of it there that are were obviously utilized by Native Americans. Well there are projects all over the country. Maine is is doing this very <coughs> well right now and it's called rewilding. Mm -hmm. And it's like it, it's really it's almost like it's America's healing. We're having this reckoning, right? And I just think there's something to that. You know? Well, that's what this whole article about letting golf courses go wild is not mm -hmm. too. I mean, it, it is something that is. And it is ironic, right? Because yeah. there are these country golfs and then they <coughs> rewild wild and, you know. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll keep updating the committee as I talk to people, and we might at some point, you know, if it makes sense, have uh, you know somebody from deep or somebody come give a presentation, uh, just to mm -hmm. educate everybody. So. When people, I just just occurred to me when Andy Danzig, the trailmaster, gets back, we had him come in once, but maybe it would be good to have him talk about his vision of trails here and how he maintains them. And he's also an invasives expert, right? Because he is so out there in muscling, the getting all that yeah. stuff. So right. maybe in June or something. Mm -hmm. Is the grant opportunity that Val is looking into applicable for what Ben is talking about, as far as how we maybe can utilize those funds or apply for funds for that property? Mm -hmm. Well, this is due March 11, um, but it's specifically on trail. So yeah. It's yeah, and the maintenance of trails. So yeah. I don't, I don't all different so. aspects. But it should be yeah. out again next year. I mean, year it well. certainly so could be applicable for the for another grant, right? Of, or Connecting or it to that property in some way, and mm -hmm. or putting a trail through it, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what what one of the things that Paul was talking about. Right. right. It, it's it's vital in the connection of the trails in the town with the, with the whole. Anyway. Why well, I bring it up and you know, cramp it and do some money to explore that as an option. Well, I actually did talk to Paul earlier about the possibility of, because it seemed very similar what we were doing. Uh -huh. um, I don't know if it's, it seems too late now because we have to you know, move right. forward by it, but I definitely think that some of the things can be combined. Do you know where that trail, where it is? What are you at? On the country club, like where would you? It's off work. And where would you go? Where or where would the entry point be? Well, there's all sorts of ways yeah. to get into it. I mean, I know how to access the country club. Yeah, but the entry point yeah. would probably be near the, near Park Lane because that's where the trails yeah. come out. Park Lane, near or, the, or yeah, Johnson Road, type. or even yeah. further or down. Or the color like shrub or early succession yeah. or young that's forest. So all, those are all kind of terms that you use. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Oh, I'll second. Like to ask yes. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Are you going to get yeah. off third and fourth? <laughs> I won't vote unless that's done. <laughs> no, no, I don't. Yeah. You know, okay. <laughs> oh, was it was a joke. It was a joke because I heard somebody say, just so do you want to make a motion to adjourn? <laughs> We're done.